Time perception is a subjective experience of time that differs based on people and their real life surroundings. Perception of time changes drastically based on our emotions and feelings at a particular moment. With most of the world still in lockdown, I think we can all relate to the feeling of time passing slowly or as we get older, each year becoming a smaller portion of our lives and so time appears to pass quickly. Changes in time perception have always been known and understood with regard to traumatic situations, but this shift in perception is also seen in pleasant environments and experiences such as the so-called love at first sight effect. The passing of time, unlike our other senses such as taste, smell and touch, is not something we can sense or feel, but rather something that is perceived. On a daily basis, our eye takes in a ton of information happening around us and presents it to us in areas of our brain that are responsible for time perception, most commonly in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. From studies on lab mice, damage to the fornix for time perception reduces their ability to recall long-term memories. This perception of time may be altered if a person is focused on a specific object of attention, such as a pretty face, giving only the illusion of slow down time in that particular moment. As perception of time is analyzed in parts of the brain that are also responsible for decision making, impairment of time perception also impairs decision making. Impairment or a disorder of time perception is also seen in psychiatric conditions, often involving impulsivity like substance abuse. An artificial dopamine high can seem like it lasts forever, but upon further recollection, it only lasts for a short amount of time. When a person looks at something pleasant, our brain secretes dopamine which boosts our mood and makes us feel emotions of elation and attachment. 50 years of research has shown us that newborns just a few days old to the most elderly experience small amounts of dopamine rushes when looking at an attractive face. It's like discovering a rare Pokemon in the wild because it's something out of the ordinary and it gets stored into memory. The act of storing memories helps slow down the perception of time and so this is where love at first sight comes from. In fact, this phenomenon of slowing down time is best explained by Robert Ornstein's book on the experience of time. When going through something traumatic like a car accident, we absorb our surroundings and the main memory forming parts of the brain, the amygdala and hippocampus, form excessive memories like Peter Parker trying to take in as many shots of Spider-Man as possible knowing full well that they're all faked. This formation of excessive memories has proven beneficial to our ancestors for their own survival. According to Ornstein, the more information and memories the brain has to process, the slower time seems to appear. This hypervigilance during life-threatening situations increases the amount of information for the brain to process, hence slowing down time significantly. However, it doesn't explain directly how we measure time internally. Why does something feel longer than the other? For most studies in temporal perceptions, scientists use what's known as the scalar expectancy theory, developed by Gibbon and colleagues in 1984. We all have an internal clock which emits regular interval ticks. When focusing on something, we're consciously accumulating the ticks, like a stopwatch that's measuring time, and once finished, we store it to memory. The important part to know is how time accumulation is attention sensitive. In other words, were we paying attention to when the task started and ended, and more importantly, the rate of ticks is arousal sensitive, and so arousing faces makes the ticks go faster. Using this scalar expectancy theory, an attractive face can divert our full attention, making it very clear when the timed event started, and allowing our internal clocks to accumulate time correctly. Much like emotion, facial attractiveness is thought to be processed partly by the amygdala and involves activation of the superior temporal sulcus, which is also activated when evaluating emotional faces. Winston et al. 2007 demonstrated that amygdala activation is actually non-linear. In other words, it responds to attractive faces and unattractive faces, but there is a much lower response for a neutral face. Ogden's 2013 paper examined this exact question. In this study, 20 female subjects between the ages of 18 and 25 were shown pictures on a computer screen and asked to estimate how long each picture was on their screen. The pictures shown to the subjects were chosen in an earlier stimulus 
in which 40 females rated 36 unfamiliar faces between 1 to 7, with 1 being very attractive and 7 being very unattractive, to get a general baseline of facial aesthetic. The subjects in the study reported that the attractive pictures were on this screen for only a short amount of time, whereas the unattractive pictures were on this screen for a longer amount of time. But wouldn't this result contradict the statement of time slowing down when viewing attractive people? Well, not really. The slowing of time may be experienced at that particular instant, but it later manifests itself as an experience of a shorter duration when experiencing or observing pleasurable actions. In other words, the smallest of highs feel extended in that moment, but afterwards we recall it as a short, fleeting experience and we want to go back for a longer period. From the results, unattractive faces were underestimated for on-screen duration, perceiving time to go faster than it actually did. In contrast, attractive faces were overestimated, being burned into one's conscious for much longer than it actually should. The paper explained this by attributing less attention being given to unattractive faces, and so accurately timing the event is much more skewed. Instead, when you see an attractive face, it immediately draws attention, so you're timing the event properly, but your rate of ticks are disproportionate because you're attracted to the face. However, there is a nuance to time slowing down for attractive faces, and Grilly et al. 1997 demonstrated that when arousal was low, positive images, so those with happy facial expressions, were judged as lasting longer on screen versus negative images. In contrast, when arousal was high, negative expressions were judged to last longer and vice versa. The way emotions play a role in attractiveness perception will be a video on its own next week, but what this finding and the subsequent 2004 and 2009 repeats tell us is that we're more aroused by angered expressions in people we already find physically attractive, but when someone we find unattractive acts negatively towards us, we end up blocking it out. Time perception is bound to be physiologically altered in pleasant and unpleasant situations. This alteration is necessary to maintain our reproductive proficiency by developing physical attachment to attractive, healthy individuals upon first sight. To finish out this trilogy on facial perception, for next week's video we'll be looking at how humans perceive attraction based on facial emotions and whether smiling really makes a person more attractive. If you'd like to get your own facial attractiveness and aesthetic assessed, you can purchase a facial aesthetics report written by medical professionals over at the Coos website.